Hey everyone, welcome to Mission the Kitch. Today we are making paella. We got all our ingredients here. It's a really fun dish to make, really tasty. I'm gonna show you how I do it. Uh, before we get started, just a little disclaimer. I know it's not traditional. I know it's not authentic. It's my take on it. It's what I like to cook at home. Uh, you know, I've made this before and thrown it up online and I got a little bit of flack for it for, for not being too traditional, but this is my favorite way to do it. I hope you guys will enjoy it. I know I do, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. First up, let's talk about the protein. We have some shrimp, some chopped up chicken breast, some spicy Italian chicken sausage. So again, not necessarily the most traditional of things, but my wife and I would prefer white meat over dark meat, so I went with that chicken breast. And the sausage over here, I found it honestly at Whole Foods. It's a spicy Italian sausage. I really love the flavor of it. I cooked it before in this dish. It goes really well. It's just what I prefer. For the veg, we have a tomato that's chopped up, some bell pepper, onion, some parsley, some garlic, a cup of homemade chicken stock fortified with a half cup of some boxed chicken stock. The recipe calls for one and a half cups, so I needed to get my way up to one and a half. And we got some nice paella rice there. And that's about all you need for the dish. It's a really fun dish to make, and we're gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so first things first, we need to get the chicken and the sausage in the pan. We got some oil, just gonna give it a little coat right there. Chicken goes in. There we go. And the sausage goes in. All right, so the chicken I had already salted when I first chopped it up, so that's seasoned. And the sausage, just by nature being sausage, it's already got some seasoning on it. What I need to do is get this pan cranked up because we want a much hotter temperature. Whenever you add you know, protein, especially if it's been in the fridge, it's really gonna spike the temperature of the pan. With a paella pan like this, it tends to be on the thinner side, so it's more reactive up or down. So we're gonna go ahead and get this cranked up. All right, we're starting to smoke a little bit. We got our heat jacked up. It's already salted. We're gonna get a little bit of pepper in here. Beautiful. All right, as we're turning here, we can see we're starting to develop a nice crust on the bottom. Now the chicken and the sausage, they're gonna have a chance to fully cook when the rice is cooking. So we don't need it to be 100% cooked through. But at this point, we do wanna develop that crust. Our chicken and our sausage are probably a couple minutes away. As we said, it doesn't need to be fully cooked through right now. We were just going for a nice exterior crust on it. Let's go ahead and give this a little turn. <coughs> okay, so I think that's pretty good. We got the nice golden brown crust that we want, so we're gonna go ahead and get these guys out. Always be careful when you're handling a pot or a pan. Use some protection. All right, let's get this pan back on the heat. And now we're gonna add our vegetables and really build the foundation of the sauce and the stock that's gonna go ahead and flavor this dish. So we're gonna get a little bit of oil in the pan. We got the oil in the pan, we're gonna go with the onion first. And the bell pepper and the parsley. Now the chopped garlic. And finally the tomatoes. These guys have some juice, so it's probably gonna get a little bit steamy. and I'm gonna mix that up and at this point we want to cook these down pretty far um, you know you can go as far as you like I like to develop a nice color to it I like to get the sugars going so we're gonna cook it until it starts beginning to get uh, caramelized golden brown delicious Ooh, it smells really good you can always smell that garlic once it gets into a pan it gets with some fat some butter or oil that smells awesome I can actually smell the parsley, believe it or not. That's coming through really strong right now. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the bottom of the pan, get all those little bits of chicken and sausage that were sticking at the bottom. So as these vegetables cook, they're gonna release some of their juices. And as we cook them out, it's gonna concentrate and get stronger and stronger. And we're gonna be tasting more of the concentrated flavor of the onion, the tomato, the bell pepper, and it's gonna be a really delicious flavor for us. When we have the stock, when we have the rice, the protein back, 
You're kind of going to forget it's there, but it's really going to flavor that rice for us. We also want to season these guys, so we are going to get some salt into the pan. And remember, tomatoes always need a little bit more salt than you think they do, so be a little bit liberal with that. And pepper. Pepper as much as you like. I'm a fan of pepper, so I tend to go be a little bit heavier. I also tend to like a much finer grain of pepper. You know, I don't really love to get huge chunks of it in a normal dish. You know, if I'm doing a steak or something with a nice exterior crust, I will use a thicker pepper grind, but for my day to day, I like to go nice and thin. All right, let's get those seasonings mixed together here. We can see the water is still getting cooked out, but it's definitely reducing down and we're about to get to the caramelization stage. You want to keep stirring as it's caramelizing. You want to make sure it's not getting burnt on the bottom. There is an idea with the paella itself that once we get it cooked, that bottom with the rice, we do like it to get a little bit crispy. Uh, but with the veg, that's not what we're looking for. At this point, the vegetables are definitely soft enough. If you wanted to begin the next step, you could. We're going for golden brown. Our vegetable base is where we want it. We can see the sugar starting to caramelize. We can smell that happening. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our rice. And we are gonna basically toast or cook that off for just a couple minutes. Get that in there with a little bit of oil. Mix it all around, get that cooked off for a couple minutes. And then we're gonna add our broth. Our rice has had a chance to cook a little bit and cook out that raw rice flavor, get it a little bit of toastiness, let it marry up with the vegetables that have cooked down. It is time to add our broth. So let's go ahead and do that. Now with our broth, we want to stir that in and we want to get that up to a gentle boil. Our broth is beginning to come to a boil here. We're going to get our protein back in it. We're going to hold off on the shrimp. Uh, the rice will take about 20 minutes to cook and the shrimp definitely does not need that long. So we're gonna get our normal protein back in. As it's cooking, it's gonna cook through all the way. As you remember, it isn't necessarily fully cooked. We just got a nice crust on it. And then our shrimp is gonna get added with about eight to 10 minutes to go. And generally, it's just gonna steam and get cooked through. In goes our chicken and our sausage. Make sure all those juices get back in the pan because those are delicious flavor. Mix it together to get it fully incorporated. There we go. So at this point, we don't want to touch this anymore. We want to kind of lock in the simmer. We want to flip that down a little bit. And the goal at this point is to slowly let it simmer and come up to temp. The rice is going to cook. The protein's fully going to cook. As we talked about earlier, the bottom of the rice is going to get a little bit crispy as it sits there and the pan gets to doing its magic as it cooks. That is gonna be a really delicious bite later on and one that I absolutely love. It's, it's really tasty. It's got that nice sugary caramelization of the rice. It's got a nice crunch to it compared to the rest of the dish, which is creamy. And it's just a, a really awesome part of the dish and I'm excited to show you. So our pan is a nice gentle simmer. Typically about 10 minutes will go by. We'll get our shrimp involved and then about eight to 10 minutes until all the moisture is fully soaked up by the rice and you kind of hear that sizzling and that crackling at the bottom. That's how you know that your rice is getting that nice golden crust underneath. We have our paella. We nestle those shrimp in. All the liquid has finally cooked off. It took a little longer than I thought it would. It's been about 30 minutes total, but with this rice, sometimes you just never know. I can hear it starting to crackle on the bottom, which means we're getting that nice golden crusty rice on the bottom. I think it's time to pull it off. We got our little pot holders here. Always make sure you're doing it safe, especially with a pan like this that's been cooking for you know 30 minutes or an hour. The handles are gonna be hot. Get that taken off. And now the hard part, which is resting. Uh, this is always the hardest part whenever I'm cooking anything, is letting it rest, kind of settle back down, uh, come up to temp. So, got a towel over the top, and we are going to let it sit for about five minutes, and the hard wait begins. 
The paella has been resting for a few minutes here. The house smells really good. I'm ready to dig into it. So we're gonna open this up and see what we got. Ooh, that looks fantastic. Now a good garnish would be maybe some chopped parsley or a little bit of lemon. Uh, you could also potentially do something with kind of an aioli situation, but I like it straight. This is looking really good. So I'm gonna go get my spoon, dig into the side here. Get a nice side piece. Look at that, we got our rice. I see some chicken. Got all our vegetables, seasoning. Oh yeah, wow, that's really good. It seasons perfectly. The chicken's tender, the rice is super creamy. On the bottom here, we have a little bit of the crusted rice so you get that texture contrast. This is everything I want in a paella. Uh, if you're not a huge paella fan, please give this a try. I think you'll really like it. If you are a paella fan, let me know how you like to cook it, what protein you like, uh, if there's any different stylistic changes, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks.